Mark Miller and Mark Shine here with Jerry Snodgrass. And Jerry, we got to take a few minutes here and just uh, pepper you with some questions. All I'm right? all we'll for it. We'll give you a chance to respond. All right, Mark's going to start. All right, well, Jerry, you took over the Boys State Basketball Tournament years and years ago. It was your Bally week, kind of what, what you got in the OHSAA. And now as the director, director, you made some changes in their big ones. Boy, I tell you what, making changes in a hurry. <laughs> uh, a lot of risk with it, but you're right. Um, you know, it, my, my overall adage, I think most people that have attended know that attendance has slid. Uh, other than those blimps of LeBron, we all want LeBron back. Other than a blip with the Diebler brothers, we were hoping Luke Kennard a couple years ago. Those are just blips. I'm not a mathematician, but the numbers are sliding. So my comment to our board even, doing nothing is not an option. It's just not an option. Doing nothing, I can tell you what's going to continue to happen to our attendance. Doing something, it still could slide, but that makes it a little less risky. So what we're doing is we are going to eight sessions, and that simply means we're going to follow the format that NCAA, our regional tournaments in this area, you go into a game, you're going to see two games. You're going to see both games of that semifinals division. So uh, I think it's Division Two, I believe, is the first game of the uh, tournament this year. So on Thursday, you're going to see both Division One final, excuse me, both Division Two semifinals for that one ticket. You won't have to leave. I think there's a lot of pluses in that. Ticket prices have to jump a little bit, but certainly not doubled to see those two games. So a, a big move. I think that's a great idea. Hey, um, another thing that uh, is kind of new is the transfer rule. Uh, this is the second year for it. Tell us how that has affected um, play and recruiting, and has it served its purpose? And even though this is my first year in this chair, I was an instrum instrumental part of that last year because the transfer rule now, and, and a lot of people don't realize that most people think that if somebody transfers, they're going to be ineligible. That's not the case. If a transfer occurs and they don't meet one of 11 exceptions, those 11 exceptions, people will honestly say, well, if somebody moves from this district to this district, they shouldn't be ineligible. Mm -hmm. They're not. That is referred to as exception one and the most common. But if they don't meet one of those 11 exceptions, now that individual be, will be ineligible for the second half of the season, or actually speaking, after the first 11 basketball games are played and the tournament. Interestingly enough, this was proposed by the Basketball Coaches Association a few years ago to try to curtail the so-called recruiting that's taking place outside the walls of the schools. So far, I think it's working. Good. Jerry, one of the big concerns that you have, and I know a lot of fans do as well, is the shortage of officials and the fact that our officiating crews are getting older and heading towards retirement. You guys have some ideas behind that. We have so many ideas behind it. Many of our people, I, I'm not allowed, sure, sure if I'm allowed to mention an official's name on air or not, but Ben Kramer. Right. Uh, ben is uh, at New Bremen High School as a teacher. Uh, ben was the first in the state to start a school-sponsored class for officials. We now have, I believe, it's seven or eight across the state trying to recruit young officials in a multi multiple sports. There's bigger pro problems with that. It's not just recruiting new ones. It's keeping some of the older ones. Our average age of about every single sport is over 50. And it's approaching 60 in many. Some sports, it's probably a little bit more than that. So the retainment of them is another aspect. And certainly the many tentacles of that also have to do with the sportsmanship ethics that are going with it. And that's somewhat we're really starting to ramp up. Mm -hmm. uh, competitive balance has been another thing that got lots of publicity and even been challenged. But um, talk about that a little bit as we are into now the uh, second or third year of it. You know, and I think the biggest misconception with, you know, competitive balance, I think for some of us as former coaches, it's kind of a foreign term, competitive balance, balancing competitiveness. <laughs> we always thought to get competitive, get better. Yeah. You don't knock down the other guy. So that's really a tough subject in a way. What is its outcome supposed to be? If the outcome is supposed to be, more public schools winning championships, I really don't think that's what it's supposed to be. But it is really geared toward your enrollment that determines what division you're in is so altered today by open enrollment, where your kids come from. And I think that's, well, in fact, I know that's what competitive balance is designed to, to count differently so we take into consideration where your kids are coming from. If you have a large number of kids coming from outside your school district, that that should have some effect on your enrollment, ultimately some effect on what division you play in. 
the jury's out. We're in our second year of it. Um, it's hard to judge the success of it. Um, we make, uh, we've altered it a little bit. We have some proposals coming up this year that probably will alter a little bit. But it's a very, very complex thing, but something designed to really address open enrollment and where kids come from. Jay, I want to go back to something you mentioned when you talked about officiating, and that's fan behavior, because it does take some of those young people to go, you know what, I really don't want to do this uh, because of the behavior of some fans. The same thing with coaches in some respects. You've got some initiatives up to improve fan behavior. We had a leadership conference up in uh, the Toledo area, and there were 28 student leaders at this conference. Now, maybe the question was baited a little bit, but they were asked, how many of you have parents who did something that you were embarrassed by at a game, you know, in the, to officials? All 28 raised their hands. And that's a very interesting dynamic. We have really targeted kids to start with. Um, I have, I started, I believe it's four or five years ago now, a golden megaphone initiative. And that golden megaphone program is designed toward creating positive student support. In all honesty, I think across the state, it's made a huge difference. Kids, kids have theme nights. We want them to have fun. We want them to make this a social event. And you know, along the way, maybe support your, your kids too. That, to me, is critical in the officiating shortage. We now are going to start turning our attention toward adults. Um, I have a very smart team in the office that's going to work on it, but we're going to really steer toward a number of initiatives to try to get that, you know, so ki- parents aren't living vicariously through their own kids, you know, and that, that it is a, it's not the Super Bowl. It's not the NBA championship. And I think we've got to come to grips with that. Jerry, you're a sports lifer, a player, a coach, uh, athletic director, um, assistant director. Now you are the man, the guy in the big chair. How's the transition going here as we close in on eight or nine months of your first year? I paint houses in the summer still, too, by the way. (laughs) One week a year. Um, It's probably been one of the more uh, instrumental things in teaching me things behind the scenes. I am very blessed to have, one, the opportunity. Two, it's interesting, the first person that I called after I was hired for this job was my high school basketball coach. He's approaching 80 years old, and the first thing I said was, hey, Coach Jump. I couldn't call him Ron. Mm -hmm. Coach Jump. That's so powerful for what we do. The challenges that I've faced, I have a sign in my office, a big one that's wood made of wood, patience. Um, I'm probably known, my family will tell you, I lack patience now and then. I want something done. I want to do it now. I think that's a coaching nature in us. You know, we, uh, we want it done. That's why we practice. Um, I've had to learn to be a lot more patient in big organizations. Our bigness, 814 member schools, third or fourth largest in the nation, 350,000 athletes, 70,000 coaches, Um, that bigness causes us some issues sometimes, you know, to get consistent enforcement with things. I've had to learn to be patient. Part of that too, and part of the the biggest challenge, I've been there, this is my 11th year behind those doors, the first year in the chair. Mm. Uh, I'm in court a lot, and I've learned a lot of court terms. I keep saying I've read all John Grisham's books, and I (laughs) want to be able to get up there and be the trial lawyer, but uh, I've learned a lot, and a lot of it is making certain that we do things as they're written. And more importantly for me, if we need to change rules, that we need to have a fair system, which we do, but I need to make that very well known that there's a method to change our rules and listen to those 814 schools. Jerry, I know we added lacrosse. Any other new sports uh, on the horizon? Interestingly enough, um, get get your dictionaries out, okay? We are looking at, I'm not saying we're adding, but we are looking at something called esports, yep. and we would be foolish not to. Mm-hmm. People, you know, it, it, it's it's the next generation. Mm-hmm. We have to look at it. We actually have proposals coming uh, at the end of this month to look at esports, to look at men's volley, or excuse me, boys volleyball. Mm-hmm. Uh, boys volleyball is kind of following the same uh, route that lacrosse is. Their current organization, and it's it's predominant in the bigger cities, uh, in the suburbs primarily. Um, it's going away, and schools sponsor it. I would hate to leave our schools in limbo of not having some organizational aspect. We have to do it financially sound as well, so we're looking at that. The third thing we're looking at, another thing that we're looking at, girls wrestling. 
girls wrestling in many states, uh, there's quite a bit of it in Ohio now. And most states that have added it said it's doubled in one year. I know we find that hard to believe, but it's very true. So we are looking at, and we now have, I, I have to say this, our rules, and I think this is really tell, I was very instrumental in this, I'm not patting myself on the back, but we had these old archaic rules that we had to have 250 schools sponsor a sport before we'll add it. Well, that's not real practical. Uh, lacrosse is the greatest, uh, biggest growing sport I in America. There's 130 boys teams. There's 100 and about 132 girls teams. Um, we can't just sit back there and wait till they get to that level. They're kids playing high school sports. So I was instrumental in creating a category called emerging sports. And our board bought it and said that I kind of like my language when I said they'll follow all the rules of the association, except where noted. So that gave me the flexibility to do some things. 130 schools, we can still bring it in. But and it's been wonderful. It's been financially beneficial. Uh, as I said, it's growing. So I think that's opened the door to us to look at some things to get into the next century. Jerry, uh, we really appreciate the time you've given us to sit down and ask some of these questions that uh, we don't normally have a chance to weave into the basketball game. Uh, we think you're doing a great job. You understand coaches, you understand administration, and you really care about kids. And for our money, that makes a great commissioner, and you are one. Thanks. Well, I thank you, and I want, I want to add this. I, I need to add this. You mentioned those things that I've had the experience as a coach, as an administrator, house painter too, don't yep. forget that. Yep. But I've also had experience in the media. And the appreciation for what this station does for basketball, for football, for high school kids ultimately does not go unnoticed. I go around the state of Ohio and people, you know, it's a scouting method for many sports. And they'll ask me many times, wow, how do they do that there? And it's a niche that I think this station has developed years ago and does so much to promote what I think, obviously I'm employed in it, but such a great thing for high school kids. Our former partner, good to be behind the mic with you again. That's the executive director, Jerry Snodgrass.